Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Behind the Knife's Skills videos. Uh, I'm a general surgeon in the Northwest and I'll be uh, heavily involved with medical student education and simulation. And today I'd like to, uh, to uh, demonstrate for you a workshop that I usually do for our medical students uh, once per rotation. Um, historically, the, the history behind this workshop is when I was a medical student, and yes, going back to when I was a medical student, um, we had to earn our way up to the table. Uh, the way and, and to the patient's uh, side during surgery by demonstrating to our clerkship directors, private scrub nurse, that we knew all the instruments on the back table. Once we could demonstrate to her satisfaction that we knew them, we were allowed to scrub into the case, hold retraction, and participate in the operation. Now, with six week surgery rotations, we don't have the luxury of doing that anymore, so at a very minimum, a workshop to introduce instruments and understand the tools of the trade uh, is important. So traditionally, start with, uh, we start with packs and we do what, what we call a major basic set, uh, understanding that there are variations on major basics from institution to institution, uh, but this will constitute to a degree a 90 to 95% overlap in terms of the instrumentation. Secondly, there nomenclature. Uh, there are cultural, regional chain differences in nomenclature. My descriptions on nomenclature, what they're called, the eponyms for instruments, may not necessarily be completely complete and or inclusive. I'll do my best to talk about some variations that are common, um, but if there is a widget or a gadget that has a special name at, your at a facility that you rotate at or otherwise work at, um, my apologies in advance if I don't hit every eponym in the process. <clears throat> so with that said, we start with the peel packs or the, or the, the uh, paper wrap packages that come in our, our, our sets, uh, and what those contain are your, are your forceps or pickups, um, uh, knife handles, and uh, specialty suctions. So the first instruments we'll go over are, are blades and blade handles. Uh, there are two different, generally two different types of blade handles in, in these sets. You generally, we generally have in our set, we have two number three handles. Number three handles are designed to hold any type of blade, um, any type of blade that, that, uh, that is configured for that. And I should, I should cl uh, clarify, but the most common blades we use you know, from a general surgery perspective, they're really three. There's a number 10 blade used for large incisions a, a, with a, a broad bevel tip that is designed for large laparotomy or thoracotomy incisions, made for broader incisions. The next instrument is a 15 blade. Uh, this is a disposable 15 blade, but this blade can be mounted on a number 3 or the number 7 handle. Number 15 blades are used for smaller incisions, hernias, breast biopsies, um, skin lesion incisions, but they're generally meant, meant for smaller, more precise incisions. The last type of blade is a number 11 blade. A number 11 blade, as you'll notice, unlike the 10 and the 15 blade, which have beveled cutting edges, the number 11 blade is a straight cutting edge. And the number 11 blades are essentially used for stabbing motions. So not designed necessarily for skin incisions, they're designed or surgical or planned skin incisions, but rather for stabbing incisions, such as central line insertions, such as abscess drainage. Um, essentially, it's, it's virtually impossible to make a straight incision with a number 11 blade. So drainage procedures, uh, again, if in the cardiothoracic realm, frequently to, you, to, to, make, uh, to make incisions in vena cava or other cannulation incisions, number 11 blades are frequently used as well. These are designed for precision stabbing motion is what number 11 blades are used for. As you can tell, the number 3 blade and number, uh, these number two, uh, 3 handles are short handles. For longer, uh, for longer reach with blades, this is a number seven handle, and the number 10, 15, and or 11 blades can be mounted to a, num to a number seven handle as well. Uh, so essentially depending, depends on where anatomically you need to go in the body. So those are knife blades. We'll next move on to suction uh, tips. The most common suction tip we use in the operating room is a Yankauer type suction tip. Uh, those do not come as disposable suction tips in sets anymore, or excuse me, as reusable tips um, in sets anymore because they're all disposable. They come as part of disposable packs, at least in our center, uh, so we no longer have those in our packs. Um, we do have two specialty suction devices that do come in the major basic set. The, major basic, the first one is called a Fraser tip sucker, or suction rather. The Fraser tip suction does have a, has a beveled end as well. It also has a, a suction regulating um, port on the top of the instrument whereby suction is actually applied very lightly while the port is open. If we close the port with the finger, it actually applies uh, more 
uh, stronger suction so you can mediate the suction based on uh, simply applying your finger to that to that portal at the end so Fraser tip sucker uh, this the last the second one is a pool tip sucker and a or and we call pool tip sucker a pool a pool tip suction if you will uh, notice on the end of the pool tip sucker there are multiple holes and this is designed for ir basically removing and sucking large pools of usually irrigation fluid. I certainly hope it's not blood. It doesn't work very effectively for blood. It tends to plug these holes. Um, but generally when we're finishing a laparotomy, we're washing out an abdomen, uh, we will frequently put in a leader. We we'll use the pool tip suction for uh, specifically for um, for um, avoiding sucking bowel or other enteral contents into the into the suction as we're removing the irrigation fluid. A second application for the pool tip sucker that is frequently missed is you can simply remove the guard from the pool tip sucker and what you have on the end is a blunt dissection device. As you notice there's a blunt end with a suction hole on the end. Actually suction holes on both sides and what you can use this for and, and historically what, uh, what folks had used this for was fr finger fracturing uh, through plane. So this could, you could use the finger fracture through liver. It would allow, it would afford you an opportunity with a blunt instrument. It would also provide a, cl a relatively clear surgical field in the sense that it's suctioning the blood away as you were dissecting through and identifying vessels to ligate. Um, so to review, Fraser tip sucker, pool tip sucker for suction devices. So moving on to the next class of instruments, again these usually come wrapped in a separate bag within the, within the set. Uh, and you'll notice that different scrub techs in the operating room will set them up differently, uh, frequently uh, draped over the pan of the, uh, of the instrument or along the side. Um, but important to know and understand these are, these are frequently uh, used tools of the trade, and understanding what we use them for is also important. So going from, uh, going from uh, generally I like to go from long to short and, and in terms of utilization, commonality of use. So, with regard to tissue forceps, so frequently we start, um, if we're operating internally, we're dealing with visceral structures or soft tissues, we, we tend to use forceps that are um, as minimally traumatic as possible. Uh, they tend, tend to not have, they do have, it, when applied with too much vigor, can crush tissues, but essentially the tips of them are designed to be as atraumatic as possible. These, these forceps um, are called the bakey forceps. Uh, and pretty ubiquitous in terms of naming and nomenclature. Notice that the tips are designed for, for grasping and they are designed to apply minimal, um, minimal trauma to the tissues, hence we use them to, to handle the bowel and other, uh, and other delicate soft tissues, blood vessels, etc. So these generally come in two lengths. They'll come in long and short lengths for depending on the anatomic part of the body that you, that, uh, that you need to be operating in. So long to be, short to bakeys, long to bakeys. We move on next to the other, other forceps that we would use viscerally, and this, uh, the next set is, are called singly forceps. Notice the singly forceps are, are uh, looped at the end. These are also atraumatic forceps. And culturally speaking, these instruments in our facility don't get used very much. They're part of our, they're part of our sets. Uh, other places that I've rotated, this is, these are the primary forceps when handling the bound, constructing an astenosis, this kind of, that kind of thing. Some of it is a function of who, who, who trains who, and what culture and what tradition and instrument, instrumentation use you bring from, from different training programs. But singly forceps can, are generally used for bowel handling. The next forceps that we'll use, now we'll move on to the, the tooth forceps. So tooth forceps or rat tooth forceps come in both a long and a short variety. Uh, in fact, they are rat tooth and you may hearken back to your anatomy lab this was part of the your anatomy lab dissection set usually it was a rat tooth forcep for cadaveric dissection these are rat tooth forceps are generally used almost exclusively in terms is is handling of skin uh, you can use it to handle bone and other uh, uh, and, uh, other structures that tolerate being handled with a rat tooth type device but generally speaking is we use rat tooths on skin with um, following rat tooths, we have our other skin handling forcep, which are adsin forcep, and uh, and this is where we get into our into eponyms and knowing and and uh, the common the common uh, um, mispronunciation or misthoughts on what those what these uh, uh, what these eponyms are. So I, for a very long time, thought these were Addison uh, uh, forceps. They're not Addison forcep, but adsin, A D S O N, um, and not all adsins are the same. 
So frequently we think that we can use Adsyn for subcuticular closures. Um, and they pick up needles nicely, etc. They don't always do that. So if we look very carefully at an Adsyn pickup, it has a small tooth on the end. Again, this, these are designed for, uh, for suturing skin and subcuticular tissues. And then the, the, the surface be just beyond the tooth is what generally allows you to pick up or grasp, uh, grasp a needle or write a needle as you're, as you're suturing. Some adsins have a, have a ridge surface here for grasping a needle. Others are smooth. So look carefully at your instruments. Both of these are actually ridge surfaces. So you could, as you hold the instrument down, you'll notice that those surfaces oppose. You can use those to pick up to, to pick up and ride a needle as you're suturing and improve your suture efficiency in the process. Uh, but look carefully because sometimes you'll find that these are smooth and you go to pick up a needle and it doesn't hold the needle and then your attending is looking at you and wondering why the needle is coming out of your forceps every time. Just little, little pieces on and knowing your instruments and knowing those trick, relative tricks of the trade. The uh, next set of forceps are called Russian forceps. Notice in the Russian forceps there is a uh, there's a rough, a rough surface and a small cupped surface in the end. It's really a cupping and debriding type forceps. We use Russians. You'll be, uh, frequently are used to remove clots. Uh, they'll be used to evacuate um, loculated purulent fluid and abscess cavities or to scrape out abscess cavities. Russian, Russians work very well for that. These are short Russians. They do come in a long variation as well. We don't have them in our set. But Russian forceps are generally used for scooping, re removing clots, etc. Second to last forcep is uh, you'll notice here is that this and notice the difference that and 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 contrast this to a debakey. These ridges are not designed for picking up tissue, but rather these are packing forceps designed to pick up packing. So packing forceps are designed for picking up uh, for picking up curlex or packing gauze. And if you're packing into deep cavities or otherwise, it affords you an opportunity to grip those to, to grip the gauze and otherwise and push it down deeply and if, and affect uh, packing in, in deeper spaces. So packing forceps. Important distinction here, not designed for tissue handling, designed to handle packing material. Our last set of forceps in the set, and, it, and uh, like the packing forceps, this is an unpaired pa uh, forcep. This is a, this is a, um, uh, a Bonnie's uh, forcep, or generally one that is utilized uh, pretty much exclusively for, for fascial closure. Notice that it has it has very pronounced rat tooth formation on, on the end. It also has a non-crushing uh, a non-crushing uh, uh, aspect to it just below the teeth, and that's designed to allow you to grip and grasp the fascia as you're as you're affecting fascial closure, or really any any deep layered closure where you have to have a good grip on the tissue. Again, unpaired because we're generally working that instrument is working by itself um, pretty exclusively now. There are variations on this uh, on this instrument. Uh, the eponym at our at our facility is a Bonnie forcep. You may it, it may also go by the eponym of Ferris Smiths, um, which which historically have a rounded handle. They give you a broader gripping surface. Uh, but there are but there are multiple variations on that theme. When again when when asking for this or you hear this as a student getting asked for, you know that we're getting close to the end. Mm -hmm.